Here we go. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> art collab, Zoom cast number five. The art of self-care with <laughs> Sarah and Matt. Matt and Sarah. <laughs> did you all have a good weekend? I did. I did too. Spend the weekend with my sister. We had a cookout and it was just really nice to be with family since it's been this crazy year so it was just nice to hang out and just chill you know exactly yeah we will talk a little bit about that of course because that's our topic but we wanted to um start the episode um with what's new with us um sarah what's new with uh i am sarah <laughs> So I don't know if you listened to the last episode, I was talking about maybe possibly having a shop open. <sighs> so I am going to do a special like drop focusing on some G clay prints and some special um, art foamies that are exclusive to my site. And it'll be opening on July 15th. Um, at 12 p.m. Eastern. So um, the link is in the chat. So feel free to join in on that time and purchase to your heart's content. Thank you. And then um, I will be doing a flag book class with the National Museum of Women in the Arts. It'll be July 23rd from 10 a.m. to 1130 Eastern. This is free. Yes free so sign up i think um the the max we can do is 65 and i think we're already at 50 so you want to go ahead and go over there and register as soon as possible and then i have two classes at pyramid atlantic um they're both online so it doesn't matter where you live you can attend these online a black print repeat so focusing on carving and creating your own stamps and learning how to do my multi-layered technique that's august 21st from 10 a.m to 1 30 p.m and then a shibori indigo dyeing where you make your own vat and dye pretty much the whole weekend um but you have three hours with me focusing on how to do all the folds and everything so that's august 28th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. That's it. These are some really, really cool classes. I know. I feel so like, you know, like when you're doing something and you realize that this is where you're supposed to be. Like when I'm teaching these classes, like I just feel myself feeling more like me each time I do it. So I'm excited. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, was that it? What's new with you? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so uh, what's new with Natalie Studio? Um, well, I'm actually already preparing a huge event that's coming, you know, next yeah. year. So that's a lot of uh, background work. Mm -hmm. But then um, I also have uh, one, one thing that I wanted to uh, point out is uh, there's a stencil club with Stencil Girl. So Stencil Girl has their own stencil club where there are exclusive every month. There's a new stencil set coming out, which is special and very limited just to the stencil club. And Mary Beth and I, we meshed up together some stencils. So each of one, us picked the other person's, like what was my favorite free stencils of Mary Beth and then Mary Beth picked the three that were her favorites of mine. And then they were meshed together to either create a new, uh, total new design or um, just make it smaller. So for example, the little elephant that you see there, that was one of my first um, stencils for Stencil Girl in 2013, but it is a big one. It's usually like a uh, letter size um, elephant mask and yeah. stencil and she just wanted it to be super small so it's I think it's a four by four and then you see a bigger one a six by six stencil that has four design elements of ours and then there's a bigger stencil uh, I think they're nine by eleven 
um, that has, uh, again, also stencils of us. So if you're at all interested in this, check it out as a member. I don't I don't know a lot about the membership, like what the rules are, but I think you can kind of come and go. Um, but uh, Kim put the link in there. So if you want to check it out, and then it comes with a video that uh, Mary Beth and I recorded, and I was supposed to teach Mary Beth uh, some techniques uh, using those stencils. And when you sign up, you get the stencils, and then you get also the video. So I wanted to mention that. And then I also just want to mention real quick that um, for the Spill Your Heart, which is a webinar that I do um, with different artists, uh, the next panel will be on July 30th um, at noon East um, New York City time. And my guests will be Amanda Trout, Birgit Copson, and Didi Katran. Super, super excited for it. Uh, and we're talking about artistic inspiration, finding the na the ma magic. And Kim put the link out there for the uh, registration. And other than that, stay tuned at the end of the month when we will have a new Art Foamies release. I think it's on the Yay! 23rd. And I just got the big package with the new ones. And so I can't wait to share. Actually, Sarah saw them already. Yeah, and they're fabulous. <laughs> I just saw on the peak of my eye, I'm going to answer this right away. Uh, Karen said, hey, my first time here, Ned, are you Dutch? You sound like my in-laws. Um, that will scare my Dutch friends. <laughs> I'm German, so close, close. <laughs> Close and borders. <laughs> so, um, Sarah, do you want to tell everyone about, no problem, Karen, um, what the um, topic, where we came from, and so on? Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about the art of self care. Um, the thing is, we wanted to kind of take this time to focus on, you know, making sure that we don't forget to take time to breathe, reset, make sure that our artistic practice is aligning with our purpose. Um, it's also time to talk about, you know, how we as artists, we always are going, 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 doing, 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 doing. And so this is time for us to like, really think about, you know, taking care of ourselves, whether it's like various projects, obligations, revenue streams, we're always like doing so many different things. So sometimes it, we just really need to take time to take breaks and remind ourselves that self-care is important and crucial to our success as artists. Um, we're going to discuss today how to make sure rest is a part of your schedule, share your personal favorite ways to take a break, and most importantly, we'll talk about how to rest and help define your focus as an artist, allowing you a moment to reflect on what you're creating and why you're creating it and any adjustments that you might need to make. Yeah, so here we are, Art of Self-Care. So Sarah said I should go first today. So yeah. here I go. Yeah. <laughs> I just came back from the um, cat skills, like not really the cat skills, cat skills, but like, it, you know, it's the beginning of it at the Delaware River. And um, it was weird because my husband, um, he is writing a book. And so he rented a cottage for a whole month to write the book. And he was there a lot by himself. But part of the plan was that I should come a couple weekends with him uh, for four days for a longer weekend. And so I went for three weekends not all in a row. It was like on, off, on, off, on, off. So it was like three weekends and total 12 days I spent there. And it was really hard because um, even though I felt like a, I felt like overwhelmed with everything, um, I think a lot of people might have uh, that feeling right now, right after the, you know, we're coming out a little bit of lockdown and um, going back a little bit more to uh, normal that we are vaccinated, but also in general, there is, you, you know, it's just like, I need to do this and I need to do that. I can't really take time off. And I was like, I can't go to the cottage like, and, and, and go Friday and Monday. I got to work, you know? And he was like, no, you don't. You just go there 
and relax. And so it was awesome. And um, Sarah even asked me if I would have, um, if I take a sketchbook or anything. I remember that we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago. You know what? I haven't done real, like really anything that was art related um, in weeks. And I feel good about it. I'm, I can't wait to get back to the studio. Uh, I was I was like, I'm not going to bring a sketchbook or anything that, you know, a book that I wanted to read for business stuff or whatever, because I was like, I, I, I know I'm not going to get to it because I need this off time. And then if I don't do it, then I will just have a really, really bad feeling. You know, like I'm guilt, I'm feeling guilty that I didn't do any of the art stuff, you know, uh, and so I just said, I'm not going to do it. And so I feel really good about it. <laughs> you know, I am so proud of you because I was like, oh, is this bring a couple of things, a couple of stamps, you know, play around. And you were like, I'm not doing anything. No. And I was like, well, okay, well, excuse me. Let me, you know, clutch my pearls. <laughs> and I'm like, go ahead, Natalie. <laughs> do nothing yeah that's important it really is yeah there was um I, I think that we sometimes forget i mean there's something about and uh, that we can talk about that or not but as you know as a european like in germany we actually have um when i worked in the law office before i became an artist i had six weeks of vacation and you know you would take three weeks off in the summer like most people take three weeks off in the summer and in Europe, you're gone. You're like, you're gone. There is no email. Usually, I mean, it changes a little bit, but it's like, I'm not there. Don't you ever even like contact me and whole businesses just shut down and they do their summer thing, right? And then moving here, I feel like I have really a acclim acclim uh, got used to the American way of life where it's like, going, 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 going. You cannot take off three weeks. That's crazy. Who goes away for three weeks, you know? <laughs> so um, I want to reclaim a little bit of my heart. <laughs> Reclaiming my time, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I have a similar story. Like, you know, I, of course, worked in retail and we got two weeks a vacation a year and uh when i and i was adamant by about keeping my personal phone and my work phone separate so i had two cell phones and um when it was time for my two-week vacation which you usually end up being like a staycation i put that phone in a drawer and like cut it off because there'll be always someone hey sarah I know you're on vacation, but I have, knowing that you had an out of office and someone to look over your stuff, <laughs> you're gone, but you don't call that person, you call me. No, I need to be off. Like when I say I'm off, I'm off. When I clock out at five, I'm off. Don't call me after that time because it's my time to like rejuvenate and rest and get myself together so I'm energized for the next time that I come back to this place, right? And so I kind of apply that to what I do now because, you know, I do take time off to do nothing. Even like, it's been hard, but my 20th wedding anniversary is the week of August 9th. And um, people have been like saying, hey, I want you to come teach a class. Blah, 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 blah. And I'll go look at a calendar. Oh, no, no. No. <laughs> Even even today, someone asked me, hey, can you come? It's going to be a live event the week of. And I'm like, nope, that's my anniversary. Even if we don't do anything, I want to be off the entire week because I deserve it. Exactly. Can I ever get that time back? No. And especially since we've been on lockdown this, <laughs> this whole time, like I'm going to enjoy my time off with my husband. And I don't want anything to get in the way of that. Um, and no, I will not, I will follow your lead. I will not bring anything art related. <laughs> I, 
I will not bring a stamp or a carving material. We're not going to go to any art supply stores or anything like that. We're going to just enjoy each other, right? And I think that's important. So when I come back to the work, I'm rested and rejuvenated and able to, you know, be myself. Yeah, I think there's like two two things that are always so hard about it is um, a uh, you're working for yourself, right? So the, so you're the boss. I sometimes jokingly say to my friends when they are like, "Hey, could you could we meet for lunch or whatever?" You know, I'm in the city or whatever, and I'm like, I don't know, I have to talk to my boss. She's a real hard, you know, hard person. <laughs> to see and then they're like come on she can be a little bit nicer right so 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 you're your own boss and that's that's part of the problem because the the work never ends like there's no um thing and then the other thing is like everyone every when you make art your full-time business and especially with different revenue streams um that there is truth to when people say, well, if you do what you love, then you never work a day, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, nah, it's not quite why, how it works, right? So if you do it as a hobby, then that is your downtime. You're doing art as your, your thing of like relaxing and, you know, like doing something for yourself and uh, you have more time when you have vacation and that's when you paint more. But I feel like um, a lot of the work that I do where, where it's not just where, where it's not like there's a lot of art related work that is like real work, all this work. But I mean, like, if you're like, OK, I have new stems coming, right, then it's not only the designs for the stems, but you also have to think about like, how do we make samples? How do we how do we put them in the store? What are the logistics, the pricing, the advertisements that they come out? So, so that becomes, you know, that's that's art related work maybe, but it's not super fun. Like some of it is not super fun and it never ends. Like you, you know, you go in the spiral. So I think there's a lot of like this um, talk that we have, oh, you do, you never work again when you're, an artist because you do what you love and it's like I do I do what I love but it's still a lot of work and that means I have to make sure that I take off and um during the pandemic it felt like you know you you couldn't really go away you couldn't really uh go on vacation and I actually I don't think I took real time off at all uh last year nope <laughs> Because I think primarily, well, for me, um, prior to the pandemic, a lot of my classes were canceled. So I had a lot of downtime, right? So then when things started to pick up, like crazy, like I couldn't believe like classes were running with 25, 30 people, like what? I couldn't even get two people to join a live class and yet these online classes were constantly coming up and then there was like oh I saw you at this can you join me on this and then it was like networking like on steroids but we're home mm -hmm. I don't know how to quantify all that happened last year but then I was constantly working like every weekend teaching a class teaching a class because I was like when I'm else when am I gonna work after this I don't know because it's like there's this unknown mm -hmm. thing that was happening in my mind so I was just taking on everything I, I as I've told you it was the year of yes I will take yes I'll do, <laughs> yeah. it. I'll do it and then now I'm getting to the point where I'm saying uh maybe <laughs> I need some time off okay you know and then the other thing too is I'm I'm becoming aware of my zoom fatigue yeah. I'm tired of not being able to see my students make things. Sometimes I've taught classes, like my most recent class, it was like half the class, all I saw was their name. I didn't even yeah. see their face. I, I can't live like that as a, as a teacher. So I know this of myself. So working on creative ways to get 
that extra 8% I've been saying this since we started this podcast, that 8% back for myself to make myself feel better Um, because I need it. I know I need this. I'm self-aware about this. And so scheduling that, carving that time out. So even even if I do have, you know, my time with my art friends, I make sure that it's scheduled on the calendar and no one can get in the way of it. (laughs) So I can get that 8%. Um, And then when you're talking about um, taking time to do nothing, where sometimes you got to take some time to do um, things that are not necessarily what you do every day. So, you know, mm-hmm. we're, you know, printmakers, painters, yada, yada. Like we have this dream that we want to be potters, <laughs> right? Yes. We need to get that done. Yes. <laughs> like there's no, there's no time to waste. We need to really get that scheduled and go and do it. Like right. I have this running list of dream things that I want to accomplish that not necessarily a printmaking or book binding or anything like that but there's this other art avenues that I want I want to explore and see if I like it you know what I mean like I would love to weave a rug don't know why but I just would love to do that um or screen print like my whole entire I'm not gonna do any wallpaper but I would just like to screen print some wallpaper and just look at it and maybe frame it, but I am not putting it on my wall. I will print my wall from now on. But but I know that because I spent the time investing in myself. And uh, I remember we were talking earlier about like some people have their opinions about like what you do and how you do it. And I had done this class where I taught some people how to make stamps. And she was like, I'm not gonna invest. And art supplies, I'm only going to use once. And I'm like, yes, you should. It's important. Uh, Because there are things that I tried, and I'm glad I tried it. And I mean, I like it, but I tried it, and I know that I can do it. But let me move on to something else, right? Instead of sitting there saying, I should have, could have, would have, I wish. You know, I don't want to be that kind of artist where I'm like, I wish. Because I wish, we wish, you wish to... uh, do pottery, right? So let's get that done. <laughs> yeah, we will do that. Do Raku. Yes, like. we will do that. <laughs> We're so right. like the great British pottery thing has totally yeah. taken over to. with us. We got to yeah. do it. Yeah. But I think the other thing that's so important about, um, you know, that that's true. There are things where you're like, I want to learn that. I want to do that. But there are also things where when you just say, hey, I want to be... I, w- I just want to do nothing, which is not really true. Like you still do something, especially when you go somewhere else. But then you see or you experience something that will feed into your work later on, right? Like, um, so for example, we had this cottage and the woman who, um, who ha- owned it, it was an Airbnb, um, she is a creative director, I think. And she... Um, she oh, she she rents it out but also lives there once in a while right so she she has like a room that no one can get into and that's where her private stuff is but then she basically set up the um uh, this old farmhouse the way how she really likes things and she is super super duper into um foraging so everything that she owned was uh, or what she had like all the furniture all the decoration pieces were either found objects uh, in nature or things in the thrift store that she then created something new out of. So they were like reclaimed wood that she made furniture or had made furniture of. Um, There were bricks that were, you know, old bricks from the farmhouse that were the fireplaces Mm -hmm. or, you know, like she had all these like really cool things in her house and then it was um so interesting i mean i like to thrift store and everything but it made me really aware and then she had books about it too right so it made me really aware of um this idea of you know foraging there are people foraging and they use only these things so i i started like looking at her books and i was like oh this is an interesting concept right it's a little bit different from making art of something that you find 
in the um, in the thrift store. It's more like how do I, how can I reuse that and repurpose that in in life, right? And it was super fun. And then when we went to all these antique stores, there's a million of antique stores there. Sarah, you got to come uh, one time with us. It's insanity. And um, I was starting to look at the pieces also in a new way, but just thinking of how would she maybe like, you know, an old shutter becomes a shelf or, you know, an old um, hat making uh, tool becomes like a, a, a vase, right? So how can you reclaim it that it's like practical or a nice decoration piece in a different way? And that was... It was new. So then you start to make connections with your art too. And I think you need this. You need to see new things and, and do new things and just like totally give up on your ways. And, um, and that gives you new impulses because you start to make the connections with what you knew and now and what you usually do. And that gives you this feeling of, oh yeah, I have a new impulse and a new... Uh, you know, threat of how I can uh, continue and your like kind of burnout or I don't know, fatigue feeling goes, yeah. goes away, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I was, um, I just answered a question um, from MJ Eckhart about, um, they were asking about the 8%, like what does that mean? Well, I call it the 8%. It's the it's what I'm missing by teaching classes online. Me as the instructor, like I'm missing seeing the light bulb go off in a student's head. I'm missing seeing them actually construct the thing that I'm teaching because all I see is your face. I don't see your hands. <laughs> and it really bothers me. So, you know, I miss the days where I could be in the room with my students and walk around and see what they're doing and be fully immersive in their, you know, student experience. And I feel like I'm kind of missing out. It's I miss fun. that too, but I think I, I miss in general and um, Beverly just um, mentioned that best reach out, meet a friend, chat tea and cake. Um, I, I just miss um, social interactions, like with people just hanging out and it doesn't matter if it's students or friends. Sorry, students, you know what I mean with that, right? But the other thing is also um, living in a city. Um, a lot of the reason why I love living in a city is the energy that's there. And um, as you might know, I mean, you, you guys all know, it's like, you know, cities were kind of deserted in the last year and you I wouldn't really go out that much and I feel like that's a lot of what my um my recharge comes from it's like just going out to a museum or walking through the streets and seeing people and just get all these like influences right and um that energy is slowly coming back um, and that's good, but that was part of my daily routine recharge was like my stroll through the woods. Like you go outside and you try to be very aware in that moment when you walk uh, through the streets of uh, all kinds of, of the architecture or the flower. Like you just, you don't, you're not like I'm walking from A to B because I need bread and butter and whatever. I'm walking and I take this time to stroll around and I look up like, and it's funny, you have, some of the streets I've walked like a million times and yet still I recognize different things. And I'm like, oh, this would make a cool stencil or stamp or, ooh, what a cool color combination on that house. You know, like you get all these, like you're trying to be really aware walking through your city or nature, wherever you are and really take notice of your surroundings and not necessarily with that goal that has to be art later, but like take, you know, just being a, like in the moment, I feel is part of self-care usually for me, of daily self-care used to be before the pandemic. You know, <laughs> You just brought something into my mind. So I feel like now, even as if I'm driving or even walking, 
I'm noticing things even in my own neighborhood that I didn't see before. Like, it's, I don't know if, how to <laughs> explain it, but I feel like I'll be driving and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never seen those wildflowers before. Was that tree there before? Like things that I had never, like we were in the zone and we kind of like put it in the background. Now I'm like, I'm seeing everything with new eyes. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to let that go. Like I want to be, I want to continue to be curious and um, notice things around me instead of, you know, walking around with blinders on. That's how I felt like, you know, I was before. So just trying to, you know, jump in. Like today I went for a walk. Like I did a walk run or what's it called? A, a wog? Yeah, a wog. Like you walk and jog. <laughs> So I set the timer and I did one minute of, of running, one minute of walking, running, because I want to get my stamina back up to running because I haven't run really in a year and a half or so. Um, but trying to get myself back into that feeling that, because my feet, my legs were like, what are you doing? You haven't done this. What is this? <laughs> I could feel the lactic acid like burning in my mm-hmm. heels. Like, you must be out of your mind. That's what my legs were saying. <laughs> but I kept going because I, I figured if I do the timer, that would at least I would do some running and then walk and try to like, you know, get myself to continue to co- complete it because I did make it to the end. Right. But I feel like if I just went out there and tried to just run the whole mile, I would have felt defeated, but I, but because I did it that way, I felt like accomplished. Like I did something, you know, even had the energy to go and lift weights after that, you know? So, you know, setting time to exercise, setting mm-hmm. time to like, like I, like I'm going to go take my kids somewhere later on, like setting time with the family um, is important um, and make, and taking a class. For yourself like we're mm-hmm. you know we mm-hmm. always as instructors like I'm teaching 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 sometimes you know hey I should take a class just because I mean I may I may know how to do this already but it's nice to see someone else their perspective in teaching you know and seeing what their setup is like and just enjoying it and I'm I'm a behind the scenes student so I won't be like asking questions or anything like that I'll just be like in the background, just enjoying, you know, learning something without having, without me having to have a lesson plan, just be there and, and engaging with, you know, the other students. So. Yeah, you are a student, you're not taking over, it's not about you, it's like, no, yeah. I mean, it's taking the class, right? When I teach the class, blah. Exactly. <laughs> we all had, the, we all had those students as well. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> I'm taking over. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you said that too, because you said the uh, being aware of, and then Carmen just said, you know, life is now pre or post pandemic, trying to figure out how to live with all these restrictions that will stay, but also, you know, you're, you're kind of like, maybe be more aware. aware. And I um, was thinking when you said about like, you notice more things or you put your, your phone in a drawer um, I was I was just seeing um, for the first time since last February, last year, February, um, a friend of mine who moved to Texas. And so my last flight was her 50th birthday with other friends to visit her. She had just moved to Texas and we visited her for her birthday. And that was when the, you know, when it was already kind of like, oh, there's something Uh, beginning of February and then since the lockdown none of us even the friends that stayed here we haven't seen each other Uh, in fact one of my friends um, father-in-law died of COVID so it was a very very sad year so we would text every day and so we just saw each other because our friend had to come on a business trip from Texas to New York and we were like let's meet 
outside, you know, at a bar and we are all vaccinated and uh, be in one of those little parklets that some of the restaurants have. And we saw each other for the first time from before the pandemic. And it was so in interesting. None of us, uh, we took one photo, but none of us had like their phones out at all during the whole time. Uh, we didn't care about it. Uh, in fact, each of us were later like, oh, we missed like phone calls when we were trying to get back home. And, you know, uh, one of them was uh, calling an Uber. And I was thinking about a friend who, uh, who said that he has this rule with everyone, friends that they meet before the pandemic, and it would be they would make like a phone tower when they would out for dinner and all the phones had to be, you know, screened down uh, on top of each other and, and whoever touches the phone first, their phone first, has to pay for the dinner for everyone. And guess what? No one touches their phone. <laughs> but it's this like in the moment thing, right? You're like, okay, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm on vacation or I'm, I'm, I'm spending time with my friends. And I feel like, and I hope so, that this is maybe one thing that I hope that will stay from, you know, from missing people during the pandemic is like trying to be more in the in the moment and um, enjoying the time that you have with each other because you couldn't for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I have my phone on silent all the time. And if I miss a phone call, I'll look, oh, I'll call them back. But there's no, like, I have to be on this thing all the time anymore because it's not important. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's part I, of self-care. I need to see the person. <laughs> Even if it is social distance, like, I need to see you. Let's, yeah. let's set up some time. And people are more willing to do that instead of say, oh, I'll just text you. <laughs> I have never been like, I'm just going to text you. And that's, that's like the extent of our conversation or relationship. I need to see you. Like I need to spend time in order for me to, I don't know, feel like I'm a part of the relationship. Like I really need that, mm -hmm. you know, time. Um, and so I'm looking forward to the day we actually meet <laughs> in person. I know. <laughs> I can't wait for it either. <laughs> I know. I You're saw us crying together like, oh, uh, we're gonna cry and hug each other forever and i have an eye on my little cabinet here cabinet and our husbands are gonna be like y'all have to go home now <laughs> <laughs> like no i'm gonna stay with my natalie <laughs> and her cabinet <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the one thing that I've seen, and I think you wanted to tell a little bit about, up about it too. Uh, so Kim said, I love to garden and sometimes just sit in the garden. And I think someone else said, a comment said, I go to the beach and sit off on the rocks. Um, Harmony says, spending time out in the garden. Here is the garden again. Um, Self-care comes from being able to participate in all the amazing online Zoom sessions um so much of this will go away for person session you know how many i think actually so my husband works in um in 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 a field that's about remote working and i think a lot of this will stay i think this will be a hybrid world world i don't think that um I don't think that this will go away i don't think that online like i think we will we will be able to have for those that can have both worlds, but I also think we will have this more inclusive world where people who cannot go to classes or maybe cannot go out because they're uh, ill or they don't have the means or whatever reason, right? You will still be able to do online classes or meet people on Zoom or, you know, I don't think this goes away. I think it will be actually a nice um, addition to what we had before, honestly. I think that if we do that smart, it will it's here to stay, but not in maybe not a hundred percent, but you have this 
ability to do it, which not, not you hadn't had in that way before. Um, that's just my two cents of how I uh, think this will be the future. But um, I see a lot of like gardening and I know I'm a terrible gardener, but I love my garden. But um, Sarah. I am a plant mom. I have, well, this is my newest baby. It's a <laughs> Palea pepperoni. I can't never say the word. Uh, anyway, it's a Palea, whatever. <laughs> Are these also called dollar something? Dollar? Yes, yes. Or pancake. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have another one, but it did, it didn't look so p as pretty as this one. Um, it's really flat, but I um, bought this one the other day. I couldn't resist it, um, spe specifically because when these were all the rage, they were like fifty to whatever sixty dollars, and I got this for thirteen dollars, wow. thirteen dollars yesterday, and so I was like, well, I have to have it. I mean, it's <laughs> self care. It's my baby. So yeah. So is self-care for you? That's an interesting question now. So there's so many people, including me, saying garden gardening is kind of self-care. But it's basically you're caring of something else, though. Yes. So it's caring for they something grow, else. But to see them grow, like, as a result of your caring, like, makes me feel good. Like, even sitting here, because I have a sea, sea of green, just sitting here and just looking at it makes me feel good. And then I have the the extra oxygen <laughs> that's cleaning my air. I get the residuals of that. And <laughs> I mean, there was a time where I couldn't keep one plant alive. And I don't know how many I have. This has got to be at least 40 plants that I'm keeping alive consistently. <laughs> And I am, I'm feeling great about that. Now, my outdoor plants, I'm not sure. Um, there are a lot of like animals out there. <laughs> I was out, okay, so my husband bought, side story. My husband bought me a Mother's Day um, potted plant full of annuals. Now, I learned what annuals are. They will die if you leave them outside. That's what that means, right? <laughs> so he put that outside. I'm like, oh, this is pretty. And it was full, abundance of flowers. And so a couple of days ago, I was walking by and noticed that it was like really, really sparse. I'm like, did the deer get to it? Is it like a salad? I mean, for them, like wh what happened to my plants? So I pull out the hose and started watering it. And these two little bunnies jump right out mm. and scared me. I said, I don't like plants outside. <laughs> because I'm like, no, I just like evicted them from their house. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do? Because I can't touch them because I don't want to hurt them. But yeah, I was kind of sad. But yeah, all my plants will remain indoors. <laughs> indoors. And then if I do go outside, I have a, like a little section on my porch um, that I just sit out there with my with my chai tea and just watch the neighbors walk by and that is great and like no phone nothing just enjoying the breeze and just taking it all in and it's and sometimes it's just you don't notice it but sometimes when you have complete silence you're not talking, no one's talking to you. Just having that peace, man, it's amazing. No TV, just silence. I love it. Yes, you and your thoughts. Yeah. Which interesting thing, I read something this morning or last morning, and it was um, someone who said that, I think it was, I forgot the percentage, but it might have been as much as 80% that if you would, um pay attention to your thoughts that you think every day you would realize that you think 80 80 percent of the thoughts that you have going on in your you know your train of thoughts is the same 
every day. So it's the same stuff over and over that you're thinking 80% of it. I'm like, woo. <laughs> so interesting because like, you know, what are you like, we, we, it's again, it's the, in the moment, do we really pay attention to what we're thinking? Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And sometimes another part of self-care is to get that stuff out of your head and onto paper. Mm -hmm. and then check them off as you complete them and you don't have to do them all in a day but just getting them out of your head and on paper and prioritize your list and then get them done right mm -hmm. and I'm telling you your brain will be like thank god you finally did this thing <laughs> I'm a your big body, component of that. Your body like starts to relax because you don't, it's not all in your brain. You're not, you know, you're, you're just not like, tight. You're just like, oh, it's all out of there. I've already laid it off. And then you, and you sleep peacefully because it's all out of there. Cause you know how many times yeah. you kept it, you didn't write it down. You kept it in your brain and it replays over and over in your sleep. And then you wake up. And you go try back. It's just that's what insomnia comes from, because we don't take that time to do it. And, my, and I have resisted this, you know. You know, working at that other job prior to this, that's all I did was make lists and check them off and check them twice and whatever. And then I was resistant to it after I resigned. I didn't want to make any lists. I didn't want to do no calendar invites. I didn't want to set up no calls. I didn't want to do any of that. <laughs> that's why I totally embraced it because I was like working in a law office and I was like that's the one thing that I really learned in the law office that you got to write it down you got to have free deadline marked in your calendar and then the actual deadline um, because otherwise it causes me stress if I don't have it in the calendar if I don't have the way to work for it and I would say most of the times the stress that I have now in working on deadlines or, you know, things is usually caused by other people. <laughs> that is true. That do not write that thing down. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I, like you said, like if I have an idea or if I have like, oh, I need to do like, you know, I have, I have, um, I have written stuff on all kinds of papers. Like here's a, a, a bill that I had with my new glasses and I just had this thing, oh, I need to, I need to call so-and-so for blah, blah, blah. And in order to not go bunkers in my head, thinking about it the whole time, I just smeared it on this thing and I will either do it right after we're done or I put it in my the list the big list right yeah. so that's part of my self-care actually to um to make lists and and get stuff out of my head that i don't have to remember that I just have to remember to look at the list <laughs> yes <laughs> what else do other people do to in order to um to do self-care um let's see if we have more do you have any questions about how we do, how we, um, how the art of self, so we had felt like live in the moment, try to, uh, to really enjoy the time, have silence, we had silence, like really enjoy that or uh, live in the moment can be turn your phone off or when you're on a walk, really try to notice or when you drive your car through your neighborhood really try to notice what's out there then of course go away just don't do art like uh unless of course if you're not a full-time artist and artist you're a super outlet but it's okay to not do art every day i think this whole like do art every day is uh, a little bit over overrated and over uh, things, but you need to find out what works for you, and you only can do that if you actually do both extremes, right? Like sometimes yeah. um, to figure out what is right for you, you need to live in both. You need to live out for a while um, the other way, and then you will know, right? For me, it works better if I if I need time off, I need time off. I'm not gonna do, you know, I'm not gonna be feeling guilty about 
you know, I'm not doing art every day, 10 minutes. Like, no, that works for you. But I have to find out what works for me. And I can only do that if I, if, if I try to calm down and live in the moment. So if I would have been in the cottage and realized uh, not having my note, my sketchbook with me um, and not sketching is a problematic, you know what? I will find a piece of paper and uh, a pen somewhere and do something, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's also important to do art specifically for yourself. Because you yeah. know, sometimes like you could be maybe commissioned to do something or you got to do the designs for Stencil Girl or art filmies or whatever. That's work, work, right? Mm -hmm. But then there is like, hey, I'm going to grab some paper and whatever and make whatever is on my mind today. It has nothing to do with making money has nothing to do with, you know, um, getting this into a gallery. This mm -hmm. is really focused on me playing. You know, when kids have their, oh, it's playtime. That's your time to play with your materials. You've spent a lot of money on that stuff anyway. You might as well use it, <laughs> break it all out and just get into it and just have fun, right? right. Forget that we're here to have fun, right? <laughs> We're here to have fun, right? And so, and the other thing too is when you are doing something that maybe like challenge, like we were talking about last call about art is serious or craft is fun or whatever. You know, when we are trying to do something that is serious, like don't try and force it. So if you are starting and like we said, break it down into mm -hmm. individual bite-sized pieces, take a break. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go off three days from now, come back and look at it with new eyes. Okay. Let me, let me finish this out to this point. Okay. I'm going to walk away and come back. Taking breaks is important. I've tried to force things and things are not working out. I don't like the color scheme. I don't like what I'm using. And then when I take a step away and come back, oh, this doesn't look so bad. <laughs> What was I thinking? I don't know. I was just trying to, you know, force, what is it? A round peg into a square hole. It's not going to work, right? Yeah. And so um, taking taking that time off, just, just for five minutes, walk around your neighborhood, come back to it. Um, it can make a huge difference in um, getting your work done. I also think like reading, for me, reading is a, like, I read a lot of fiction books and um, reading is a big part of it because I always love to read um, usually something that, you know, is triggers some, something that where I'm like, oh, is that a true, is that, is that fact true? Is there something true to it? Or what is the, diff like, you know, and, and I love them to read, like to Google or, someone mentioned some art in a book and you're like, what is this? I want to see how that, or, you know, I was just reading um, a book that plays in, uh, it's called The Art of Losing. And it was about an, um, a family that came um, from Al Algiers. Um, and it was about the, you know, problems with France and colonialism and it was like you know a little bit about the history of that through three generations and it was so interesting because I've you know you know a little bit about the history but not a lot so it was super interesting to read and then you're like oh is that true but there were a lot of mentions like a certain jewelry and then I'm like what is that jewelry they're talking about and then you're like googling and you see pictures and you're like oh that's really interesting you know like just embracing something that's like total foreign or different for you and um, enjoying someone else's art in, in this case of a writer, right? To bring you to a world that you do not know anything about, uh, about right? Uh, and, and have this fantasy and you see these people coming alive that you're reading about um, and enjoying other person's art. And that also is, I think, so fascinating. Beverly just asked, do you do art which is totally different just for your eyes and for your moment? Um, working on it. 
right? I definitely do. I definitely do have things that people have not seen that are for my eyes only. Maybe occasionally I will cut it up into small slivers and it end up in like a flag book or something like that. But no one will know what the full picture was, but I do, right? And so like when I'm viewing that, say, piece, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember what I went through to get to this point. You know, I remember what I was doing and how I was feeling and um, all the emotions that I laid down onto that paper. Um, but no one will ever know what it is. You know what I mean? So that's like my inside, you know, conversation to myself, you know, a reminder of where I've come from and where I'm going. I think that's an important part too, that in this world where we um, are so used to sharing everything, which is, you know, I mean, of course for us as artists, it has never been easier to share with um, everyone what you're doing and the backgrounds and, you know, back behind the scene and what you're working on. But um, it's also important to do, as you said, and just like not show things, um, because you need to kind of percolate with ideas or, you know, so just self-care is also letting go of that pressure that you have to share everything that you do as an artist, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and really let ideas percolate, try things out, do them just for yourself and they will find their way somehow uh, in some way uh, into your work again, right? And don't let the... Uh algorithm dictate how you are going to share your work exactly it's not important i'm just telling you i used to be like that oh i gotta post every day at the same time blah it's not it really that does nothing for my brain nothing for my mental health right exactly so i post when i'm ready same here i haven't posted anything to my feet and i don't know there's gaps of like one or one month probably. And I'm like, whatever, you know, like, it's not that I, it's just like, I don't want to have that define how I plan. Like I have enough stuff on the plate. I don't want to make art so that I can show it on Instagram or Facebook. Like, you know, like I can't, I can't have that. Dict like then, then all the self-care goes, you know, off the chart. <laughs> That's yeah, when you feel burnout, you know? Exactly. And sometimes I don't want you to see what I'm making until it's at the place it's going to be. Right. Like, can, can something be a surprise for, a, you know, I know we're live in the age where we have to see, oh, the previews, what's going to happen next? No, can we just, like, <laughs> be surprised when it happens? What happened to that? <laughs> like in the good old times when you would take the, when you would go to the photo store and pick up your photos from the vacation and it was the big surprise and you're like, oh yeah, I totally forgot, you know, that when 18 the out of the 24 is black because you, <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> you didn't, <laughs> because the cap was still on. <laughs> And they make you pay for all of them. Yeah. Good times. Good times. But it was cool. You would be like, oh, yeah, that was the whole vacation. How cool was that? Instead of having the vacation, like you're like, when I'm looking at my pictures again, I don't have to because I have them like always here, like on the phone. Yeah. 50,000 like times you can see a deer eating eating at a tree and I can share 50 of those of you you know more about my my vacation already than I do <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, we I see we're unfortunately almost done with the time oh I God, hope, it's one o'clock I know I hope you guys are still with us because we were kind of like chatting along but and you put took some out of this what we thought about like the art of self-care what's our next episode let's let's uh push it let's tell them uh okay. we're super excited it's gonna be uh august 3rd at noon again 
And this time we actually yeah. have a yeah. guest. And so in this episode, we will be meeting with Pass the Brush organizer, Rachel Juanita Bellamy. Uh, in 2020, the Pasta Brush event paired up um, Sarah and me, and it prompted us to get to know each other better. And pretty soon we had forged a very lovely new friendship, as you can see. Yes. Um, and this is one of our collaborations that we have done because of that. And we wanted to chat with Rachel about uh, the benefits of artistic collaboration, the importance of elevating others, um, and what has changed since the past the brush event last year and what challenges remain. So I hope you will join us um, to that episode with Rachel, right? Yes, please join us. I think it's going to be a wonderful conversation and it'll be interesting to see, you know, what's happened since we did this last year. So yeah, I'm excited. Me too. And she is just super fun um, as well. So last question, Sarah, what are you doing for self-care today? Oh, you can't tell us. Oh, they're, they're not in the room. I'm taking, okay. my, I'm taking my kids to the pool. Sometimes just like floating in the water, like this brings relaxation. And also, you know, it takes that weight off your shoulders. So I'm going to just lie in the pool today. So yeah. And also, I wanted to just put this caveat out there. Self-care is not selfish. The end. That's true. Uh, let's last caveat uh, for people that take care of other people. If you don't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of other people. If that goes for all the people that I know that are taking care of elderly people um, or, you know, their spouses or kids. Um, you need to take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of your loved ones. So in that, I hope you will take care of yourself today and yeah. do something nice, even if it's only 20 minutes. Yeah. You deserve it. <laughs> you deserve it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.